For two days of this week, I'm on the road again. I've got 15 tippers on a muck shifting job, and I've got two trains coming in, but two machines broken down. I'm Daniel, and this is Ashford Weekly, episode 72. Or is it 71? I think it's actually 71, you know. There is a window in which we need to offload some jungleistic pain. Once again, we are in that position. And oh my goodness, it is huge. Let's hope it fits. Personally, I don't believe that's enough. Just needs to be a little bit faster. You like the way I put this in? Please keep doing it. All the lads are down there because of the leak it had on it. Are they stupid? Just leave it there. There's plenty of work that needs to be done in the back. Two hands, bruv. And let's take it to them. It's Monday morning and I'm not in the yard. I'm over at Southern Vulcanizing looking at the frame of our secondary conveyor belt. And oh my goodness, it is huge. Now this one's gonna be built in slightly a different way because it doesn't have the impact. The first conveyor, all the impact from the hopper is gonna go straight on top of it. Down here we have the impact unit. We already marked it out. We're gonna have the tensioner here and the big roller. So this is where the majority of the impact will be. And then we're gonna measure down here and every eight to 600, we're gonna have one of these vary troughs and we have the larger roller here and we have like the lollipop rollers on either side. This is where you change the angle of the belt. And then once we've built the whole thing, we're gonna build up this side and we're gonna go out like this. The reason for that is when the material's going upwards, the rocks and stuff are gonna wanna fly backwards. So we're gonna build up and cover it to stop any of those coming off the belt. Just realized over here as well, we have our shaft and our drum. So everything's coming together and we're making a couple of plates over there that are also part of the conveyor. I didn't actually know <laughs> this, this was gonna be this size, but, um, as I said with the first one, this is going to be built strong to last long and there's a long way to go. So let's have a look at how that goes. Doing a little takeover at Southern Vulcanizing today because we've got one of our volleys in here as well for a bit of maintenance work. At the very start of the auger, you've got something called the scroll, what is completely worn away. Now that is worn away because when all the material comes off here, that is the first place where it hits. Now it should be, no, no, don't worry. It's a working area, don't worry. <laughs> Um, the only thing I did have to turn off for copyright was uh, Nathan had this radio blare and he was playing some jungleistic pressure <laughs> and some jungleistic pain. <laughs> Jungle is massive. We were skanking when this came out. <laughs> but we had to turn that off. Obviously, we don't want to strike against the channel. But we've got to get in here, strip this entire area, and we've got to put something new in there. This is a bit of maintenance work. There's nothing that you can do to get away from it, but it definitely needs to be done. It's still Monday and now I'm in the yard. I can see in the distance there's a train offloading what reminds me of last week. Ah, thank goodness we were able to offload last week. Let me explain to you how it works with trains. So when the train comes here, there is a window in which we need to offload it. And if we don't offload it, we could face a massive fine, anything in the region of 20K. Because when it leaves here, it has to go somewhere else and be loaded. And if it doesn't work out here, it messes up everything that's going on at the next site where it's going. And it's not to mention we have to offload it, we have to completely clean the wagons. Because if it goes somewhere else and it's gonna have a different material on, then the material will be contaminated 
complicated and that's not going to be any good to anyone. So I can see the offload taking place. Also in other news, I can see Liebherr are working on the loading shovel. Now we weren't able to use the loading shovel because of the leak it had on it, but I can see that Liebherr are over there and it's being revved up now. So I'm not sure if he's already fixed the leak and he's trying to bring it up to working temperature, but it's a real important machine that we need to have. We do have the smaller loading shovel, but it's a lot better to work with this bigger one because it gets things done a lot quicker. I have to address this. So uh, unfortunately, QPR are out of the FA Cup. We got beat by Peterborough. Congratulations to my friends at Mick George, because Mick George are on the front of the Peterborough shirt. So it was basically Asheville against Mick George and we got turned over. So congratulations, Neil, who sent me a message immediately on 90 minutes. So I'm putting it out there. I've admitted it, I've accepted it, so you can't wind me up about it. We have a number of interesting build projects coming up. You'd think that this wouldn't be a problem, but I'm really struggling to get costs from engineers. The engineers that I do know, I've asked them to come back to me with prices, but it's a very complicated structure. There are a lot of walls on the ground floor which are being removed and there's gonna be a lot of open plan spaces. So it's not very strong straightforward there's a pool house there's a swimming pool there's loads of excavation there's cut and fill there's plenty of work that needs to be done in the back and i can't get any prices from any engineers and i can't properly price the job without those prices because there's going to be too many provisional sums in there now for those of you who don't know when you're giving somebody a price for their job a provisional sum means that that cost could change because you don't exactly know what it will cost so hopefully i can get an engineer to come back to me we can go on site and do the exploratory works which basically means digging to expose the current foundation and exposing um, any existing walls and structures then they can create some structural plans and then I can price the job properly and give it an accurate cost but you wouldn't think something like that would be so difficult but I guess it's just a sign of how busy everyone is at the moment again another situation where I'm waiting um, you saw Con blurted out the job that we're doing for him with KSI or JJ and again, I'm waiting for samples and I cannot get hold of the samples. And people are thinking that it's me delaying the job or I'm not interested in the job or I'm too busy. It's not that. So what I'm physically doing today is asking David to go and collect those samples. Once I have those samples, I'm gonna to put together a little mood board and then I'm gonna sit down with Con and JJ and see if we can't get the plans finalized. Okay, well, I'll, I'll probably just have to repeat whatever's, whatever's being said, if that works. Yeah, that's actually fine. That yeah. works. Okay, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, that's both. Okay, cool. Okay. If you click on it and do hide everyone, it should make it way more clearer for you. Hide everyone, yeah? Okay. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah? Yeah, there's the link. There you go. Is that, is that all right? Yeah. Do we like that? Do, is that what we're working with, yeah? We're just about to go on a Zoom call uh, to have a look at a construction system that integrates with our new accounting system, Sage. So uh, Sage isn't quite exactly what we need to run the construction business, but this is an approved system, what bolts onto it. So we're gonna have a run through it. We've got David, Vesha, and Ashish here, and we're gonna have a look and see how it works. And this is my makeshift operation. I still got my headset on, but at the same time, I'm, uh, I'm sharing my screen here. You like the way how I put this in, how this works nicely. And David and Vesha are sitting down on my sofa, enjoying life. Um, in the room, just, just um, sort of an introduction, I guess, from, you, from your guys' point of view, who, mm -hmm. who you are. I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is Vesha. This is David. And you know Ashish you know already. Yeah. Uh, Vesha's office manager and David's project manager. Office manager and project manager. Yeah. It's Tuesday and I'm in the yard. 
got some good news this morning. Uh, we had a delivery of the samples I've been waiting for, for the project that I'm working on with Con. They have come through and Con asked me to send him a picture, but personally, I don't believe that's enough because you actually need to feel the texture and you need to actually see how the light bounces off it. So once Con has chosen a few of these, we'll put together a little mood board and then we'll be able to move along with that project. In other news, we have a problem with the 926. So Liebet are gonna come in and they're gonna try and repair that. But I think it's something again with a sensor or AdBlue or one of those issues. <sighs> Just had an email come through um, from one of the guys at Scania Finance. Now, Scania Finance, a lot of the kit that you see in the yard here, uh, they started doing our lorries and they got involved with machines and Scania even finance our Volvos. Go figure. But they just sent me through an updated asset list and it turns out over the process of this year, eight of our lorries uh, coming off finance this year, they're fully paid for. And next year we have another 10. So it's been a long road, uh, ducking and diving. You know, um, you can have cash flow pinches, but it looks like it's about to pay off because we will own those vehicles. And the plan here is to finance the vehicles over four years and then run them on a full repair and maintenance with the manufacturer over seven years. So hopefully um, we can begin to come into a new era in the company where we're not just shelling out and paying out all the time every single month. Really looking forward to that. And I'm really pleased. Wednesday morning and I'm in the yard. I had a meeting earlier talking about our website and I've been thinking for a long time that we're gonna upgrade the website, but it's not just one website. There are plenty of websites. Asheville Aggregates, Asheville Concrete, Asheville Inc, now known as Asheville Construction, Asheville Smart Homes, which is actually just a website for the home automation that we do a lot of. And then there's Asheville Heights, which is a development in St. Lucia, which I have planning permission for that I haven't got round to doing. So there's a lot I need to do. All of those websites sit on a WordPress multi-site. So I'm thinking of upgrading all of them which is a massive task but the problem with it is I don't want to upgrade these sites and I don't want to lose the history of these sites and the presence that it has on Google because they do have a great presence and some of that is uh, thankful to all you guys for watching and clicking on our websites please keep doing it however I used to only use WordPress for everything but now I've been told that there are new softwares which can be used and it's a lot easier to make a website and it's not as complicated as it used to be but I have been warned if I come away from WordPress even though I can redirect all the pages and the history of those pages and the presence should stay with Google, I am told of some nightmare stories where people have been working on websites for 10 years, have upgraded those sites, and they've lost all their history and they've basically started all over again. I've lost everything! So I'm really worried. So while I try and put a plan in place for that, what I'm gonna do is our existing sites, I'm gonna get someone to update all the plugins that make all the different things work because I've noticed that the Instagram isn't actually working on the Asheville aggregates and Asheville concrete sites. So update the plugins, update WordPress, have someone go through the site on each page and point out things that aren't working, get them to work. And while that site is working, then put a plan in place for the new site if I choose to do that, because I do not want to lose all the hard work that I've been doing over the last 10 years. Got a couple of meetings to do. I just did another watch through of the basement salvage video. What a great video click here to watch that video. It will definitely be out by the time this video is out. Hi everyone, Daniel Ashville here. We've come to look at a basement which a client has had built over 10 years ago. We can see that there's water going down the back of it. So once we've done our drainage channels, so when this is in, we should see a massive difference. It was pitch black down here. I couldn't see a thing. This is a basement salvage project that we're working on. We were using the poker earlier. An inch over there and five inches over here. One at this end and one at that end. And we're fitting that in between them. Then we're going to come inside. 
We had a massive surprise. We fit another steel directly behind it. The manhole is raised. We're going to plug this hole, then we're going to carry on. If we leave the pipe in place for a while, it will begin to fill the area. And it's not even that deep, but it's a lot bigger than the previous one. They can extend or get smaller when you twist them. And then you can slide this part straight on. We're going to have to put reinforced bar through massive gaping holes. So we plug these holes to see what would happen. This is what we're going to drop in there. That fits. We're moving the pipe along the wall there because I don't want to penetrate this wall. You can see the 100 mil pipe that we left in. It doesn't actually even go high enough. You can see how neat it looks because all the massive ducting is behind, which should limit our cracks. Yeah? Yeah, that's better. Much better, yeah? I have a couple more meetings to do. I'm going to catch up on some emails and then later I will be at QPR. At QPR at the moment, every game is a big game because we are fighting for promotion. I'm fighting the good fight all day at work and now in the evenings at QPR, I'm fighting for promotion. <sighs> and let's take it to them. On the road again. Daniel is rolling on the road again. I'm on the road for the next two days. So I'm up and down the country going to a bunch of meetings and I'll be working from the car a lot, on the phone, conversations, chasing a lot down. A mile, the destination is on your left. Thank you for that. Mr. Coffee. Okay, you just said where I'm going to get myself a coffee. Today in the yard, we have a train coming in first thing in the morning. However, you saw last week in episode 70, click here to watch that video, that we had to offload the train ourselves. Once again, we are in that position but I'm not as worried today because Flo has had a bit of practice. So Flo is gonna tackle this entire train by himself. Let's see how quickly he can get it done. All offloaded. Luckily today, we had five hours to offload the train, not four. Uh, so we had a chat with the shunter and we spoke and he said, yep, Float is a fantastic operator. He just needs to be a little bit faster, but that's not something that we are gonna push at the moment. We're gonna keep letting him learn and let him take his time so he's comfortable with what he's doing. But because of the train scheduling, we were all right with five hours today. But the most important thing is that the train is offloaded. The concrete lorry, what you saw get sprayed at John Radford the other day, we had to do a few bits and pieces to it. Unfortunately, when it was being sprayed, I think some of the wires were sandblasted so some of the beacons weren't working uh, so we had to do a bit of fault finding and find the cables that were broken the uh, we've we've managed to reconnect all of those cables we've got the beacons working again we need to fit some mirror guards uh mud flaps and a few signs to the lorry so on the left and right of the lorry at the top of the body we have to put sand on one side and stone on the other because that is part of our bsi so we need to make sure that that lorry is labeled properly i've just pulled up i'm going to grab myself a coffee and like i said the rest of the day will be on the road on the phone and in and out of meetings i was going to get a coffee and I've realised that they're giving out parking tickets here. I thought that parking was only a problem in London. But these parking attendants, they are rapid. But I think they put them in a training school and they get them to do 100 metre sprints and then they train them in long distance as well. I think this guy abseiled down the side of a building, did the 100 metres in 8.9 seconds and now he's giving out tickets. So I can't even get out and get a coffee. But I do need a coffee. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do here. Hmm... Now he's made out that he's walking up the road, but this could be a bluff, a double bluff. And then the second I jump out of this car, he does three backflips and slams a ticket onto my windscreen. I don't know what I'm going to do here. Yeah, he's out of sight, he's out of sight. All right. 
I'm gonna go for it. On the road again. Daniel is rolling on the road again. It's 5.39 a.m. and I'm on the road. Uh, stayed in a hotel last night as I keep making my way up to the north of the country with my meetings. Today, there's a lot planned in the yard and I can't be there, but everybody is more than capable. First thing in the morning, we have a cement delivery. We need to make sure we get that cement in because there is a shortage of cement at the moment and we are very busy. So it's really important to make sure we have it. And with that cement, we can then go and pour some Jersey barriers because we have no stock left at all. And people keep calling the office asking for Jersey barriers and we can't sell any of them because we don't have any. And they also want <coughs> blocks and we can't sell any of those either because we don't have any. So we're gonna try and build up our stocks again. Although we do have those central bays in the yard to dismantle what we haven't dismantled yet, but I'm thinking of possibly making a wash bay so the concrete lorries can wash out when they get back in a designated area and when people are washing lorries they can also wash in those areas. Now the work of art that I call a conveyor, Southern Vulcanizing are working on that again today. Let's see how they're getting on. And something I've wanted to share with you for a while, um, a lot of the lorries are on a muck shift at the moment. When I say that, I mean a lot of our tippers, they're all going to the same job and all the lads are loading up and when they leave there, they're going to take the inert muck, which can't be recycled. So this is like when you see a load of clay, like mud, clean mud, which has come out the ground and that is going to a golf course. So all the lads are down there and it's a big shift because the work that's going on there, they need to get all the muck out of the way so they can begin all their ground works. What the lads are actually doing is leaving the yard with a load of type one. They're tipping the type one, then they're grabbing the muck, then they're tipping the muck, then they're doing type one, then muck, then type one, then muck, and then they're getting a load on at the end of the day. So the lorries are being utilized to the maximum and they're running both ways the entire time. Now that's something that, that I want to happen every single day, but it's not possible. But I'm really glad that we're able to run them like that at the moment. So. I'm gonna finish the rest of my time up north. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough energy to drive all the way back down later today. I may be in another hotel, but I can't be staying in these hotels, man. The beds are too, these people say that it's a king size bed and then my feet are hanging off the edge of the bed and uh, this, the mattress is just mad hard and my neck's all twisted. And I just can't wait to get out of bed in the morning. So I'm not sure, all depends how I feel. Oof. Saturday morning, I'm in the yard. We're preparing for Monday, loading lorries. We're catching up with paperwork and this material in front of me needs to be tested. Now we have grading and certification for this material, but for the job where it's going, they have required additional testing and they need about 
150 ton to do it, so we have six rubble sacks of each. The Type 1 as well, which is over there, we're gonna get six rubble sacks of that as well, and we're gonna put it here, and these can all be collected. Now, the site are gonna do their own testing in-house because it's not standard testing, but it's something that their client requires. I've got a load of paperwork to do because I've been on the road for the last two days, and I have an email which I have to respond to one of our finance partners. When you're trying to get finance, depending on the company you talk to, some people, it's just a numbers game. So they look at the computer and they turn around and say, Computer says no. Computer says no. And there are other companies you talk to who they learn about the company and they see the direction the company is going in. So it's not always straightforward when you're trying to get finance because truth be told, a lot of the things that Asheville have done, if you just based it at what you see on paper on an Excel spreadsheet, we might have had a lot more obstacles which stopped our growth. But luckily with some of the finance partners we've got like Scania, every time we're speaking about moving forward and a new batch of lorries or a new batch of machines or anything we wanna do, I put together a little plan. I tell them what we're gonna do. I tell them how we're gonna do it. And we sit down and have a conversation they share it with the head of credit and sometimes they pop out. You know, they take a look around the yard, uh, they look at the kit that we've already got, they can see how much money we've invested, they can see the time that we've put into everything and they can see the money, you know, because it's not easy to set up a yard like this. And then they make a decision based on all the information and their belief. Because ultimately, people believe in people when you're working at this level. The relationships I have with the funders or the heads of credit, they are more or less loaning the money to me. If you're talking about bigger firms when they're trying to get finance, yes, they work off spreadsheets, but then again, they still wanna know the team. They wanna know who's the head of finance, they wanna know who's head of commercial, they wanna know who's in operations. So yeah, I'm gonna formulate a little plan, put it together, share the information, and I'm gonna actually show how far we've come. So where we were, where we are now, and hopefully I'll be able to get all the bits of kit I want approved. Just going up to my office, because uh, Mortson Moore will be here in a minute with my new jacket. Let's hope it fits, because it's kind of chilly out here. And I can look over there, and I can see that Kevin is now practicing with the wagon on the LH60, loading and offloading. So Flo has been polishing up on his skills, so we are now giving Kevin the same opportunity. Go on, Kevin. Rubbing your hands together there. Is that because when I try this jacket on, I'm gonna buy 10 more, or because you feel it's no good and, I might, and you might be left out in the cold trying to keep warm after? <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely buying 10 more. I'm definitely buying 10 more, yeah? What, that, that, them kind of levels of confidence there. 100%. If I wait any longer for my jacket, <laughs> it's gonna be summer soon and I won't be wearing it. All right, is this the moment of truth, yeah? Oh, you got that, you stand there, you stand there. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Two hands, bruv. Yeah, but... Over the top. Your bicep, you know. I know you don't want me to touch it, but so you flex it. I'm just trying to feel the jacket. I haven't looked in the mirror yet. See, when you put when you put something on, you have to, you have to walk in it and you have to ask yourself, are they stupid? When you got your new jacket on, let me just quickly look in the mirror here and just really assess what's going on. Oh! Obviously, I'm not wearing the correct attire underneath. See. Mm -hmm. A distinguished gentleman. No. Let me just change my swag quickly. Yeah. Hold on. Wait for it. Yeah. Take a look in the mirror, say what's up. Yeah. Let me see this. See, it got a little colder. I flipped up the jacket. Let me just put the two hands in the pocket. Strike a pose, there's nothing to it. Vogue. I mean, I feel comfortable, but I need to look at it from a few more angles. Hold on, let me just... Hello? GQ, yeah, I'll holler back at you, one sec. Right. What do, what do you believe, Joshua? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Say that again. No, I'm not yeah. saying that again. No, no, say that again. Oh, no, no, say, no, no, say, no, say, say it again. That. Sorry, no, explain no, to me no, what the, why you need to leave this material here. Just explain to me why you need uh, to leave his that. His bicep changes drastically from unflex to flex. Well, yeah, okay, fine. Can yeah. you imagine? Just, is there anything else in that bag? No, this is for this is for your next piece, though, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember I said I was going to change something? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Go ahead, Dan. So there, we're going to... Joshua was making me a more some more one-away jacket. And um, if he doesn't make one for Dr. Tunde as well... Mr. Dr. Tunde Okawale will not be happy. And you will not feature on Tunde Weekly. If you know the law, tell us what the law is. If Tunde was to find... Yeah, if you, then you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't feature if Tunde didn't get his jacket. The colours were going to be, what was it, black and red. red yeah. But especially for Asheville, for the one-away jacket you're making me, he's changed it to yellow. Which Thanks I appreciate. Yeah, that is coming, so what are you saying about this jacket? What are you saying? Are, you, are we ready? Are you, are you going to do any more? Are you, are you going to? That's the only thing I was thinking. I was do, touching the bicep, but I'll leave that. I'll leave that for now. Okay. So you're happy with it? Yeah. I'm happy with that. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Is this it's Yeah, we're it's done. Favorite. Yeah. This is that kind of toad from toad hall kind of fabric. That cashmere. This is it. Uh, yes, yeah, fine. I will cool. do that. Cool. Cool. No, especially if you're going back in the gym. No way. Fine. 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 All right, wicked. Boom. All Told right. you. So you got. What did you tell me? I told you a six suit, sick jacket. Do you know what your other jacket? I still got it, you know. And you've got a couple shirts as well. Yeah. Give it another couple of weeks and then bring them. But you've got them to bring them, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I just need to the the body the body um, mutation with mid body mutation. Okay. I'm with you see what I'm saying? So oh. the body is going back. So like parts of the body are going in and parts of the body are going out. It's all good. Uh, wicked. Yeah, I'm looking to show that one as well. All right, so I'll take all this out. Obviously, with this, it gets better if you've got a clothes brush and just brush it down because it's. The type of material needs to be brushed. Bro, I barely brush my hair. You want me to brush my clothes? <laughs> you want me to brush my clothes? Straight up. It looks, trust me when I say it. Listen, bro, I wake up in the morning, I wash my face, I cream it, and I brush forwards. So you're saying if I leave the house, I've got to brush my coat as no, well? No, it'll look good. So what I'm saying is the coat will look good as it is, right? But mm -hmm. it'll look even better if you brush it and make sure I'm not left anything there. No, no, no. If you left something in there, bro, fine. No, I need that. Bro, just. just Wait, what is this? Do, what you gonna do that What's this? My material, my jacket. Over, leftover. What? So you're just trying to clap my things? What are you saying? You're gonna make man a scarf? I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. But we just my material! Let me see how much there is. Let me see how, let me see how much there is. What can I do with this? I ain't nothing I can do with that. I can make a scarf out of it, to be fair. The, uh, you want a scarf? Let's just do a flashback to 10 seconds ago when I said make a scarf. What are you saying? You're gonna make man a scarf? You, was you recording? Yeah, of course he was. Uh, just to be fair. Making a scarf, you just might as well just wear it like that. But I'm not a seamstress, I'm not going to take this home and Actually, make, no, make a bit... Look, look at along there, that's all jagged. Okay, now, we'll sort You're going to make me a scarf, yeah? yeah? I'll make a scarf like that. We have it on camera, there's material left over and you're going to make me a lovely scarf. Let me just yeah. make sure it's not going to itch man's neck. Nah, that's be nice. And see when you make that scarf, yep. yeah? See when you finish it, possibly some yellow stitching to match the... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. I was thinking about that. Bit very, yeah. very fine detail, just a little bit... Just a little bit of just detail, there. and I'd like it. I'd like it embroidered as well with my name, because you know when you go to school and you do PE, and then you leave your things there, somebody could take your clothes. So like, hold on, wait, I'm gonna put your full name on it, or, or no, 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 not Daniel Ashville Louise, but my initials, say. yeah. Okay, cool. Like my initials, like we've got in the yeah, boat. Right, and not one of them dead ones that you iron on like school uniform, yeah, like like just embroidered, I'm gonna do it, please. I'm gonna do it exactly like this, like that, yeah. Yeah. Now look at the promo, look at the man. Yellow, look at the yellow. Um, see, come on, look at the detail. Oh. Make me a scarf to match your jacket, yeah. Imagine, see the things I, I the lengths I go to. Uh, Wicked. The next pieces will be coming in two weeks. So Joshua was about to leave. Yeah. And then he said to me, "The mugs. Can I drink out of them?" I was like, well, "What do you mean?" He said, "They kind of look decorative." I was like, "Yeah, you could drink out of it." And then he said, "I said you guys sent me two. I've got to bring one back." How many did you pay for? One. And how many did they send you? Two. That is another example of how the whole merch thing backfired on me. <sighs> That's another person they sent to, and he paid for one. First one came, a couple weeks later, another one came. And then another one came again. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your honesty. It's all good. Yeah, uh, but make sure you bring it back, don't it? <laughs> so that one, are you sure? I yeah. sure I can keep it. Okay, cool. No, 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 bring it back. I was thinking he's going to be like, no, I don't want to keep it. Yeah, 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 bring it back, bring it back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, was that jacket free? Wait, hold on, did he pay for that jacket? No, you know what? I'll send you the invoice for that bad boy. No, 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 I paid 50% already. I paid 50% already. I paid the deposit. Okay, yeah. I'll try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to say. Exactly, so run me back my marks, innit? <laughs> Thank oh, you very that's much. That's a good point, that's a good point. <laughs> see you later. In the hours. I've seen a bit. Look, man. We've all seen a bit.
Another example of this merch problem. They sent it to him and they sent him another one weeks later. You know, there's not huge margins uh, with merch and it's not like with the merch we were trying to retire by selling merch. We're just trying to do it to give a piece of Asheville to people so they could have a little piece of it and it ended up backfiring and we're losing money because of how it's been distributed and the customer service has been dealt with because a lot of people were very upset with how they were treated. So you send him two and you send someone else nothing. We're still firefighting and trying to make everyone happy. But you know, hopefully we'll get there in the end. I shout it out twice. Here's the first time. We have a website, aggregatesupplier.com. And here's the second time. How about aggregatesupplier.com? Well, I shout out aggregatesupplier.com. Yes, a shameless plug. I want to say thanks to everyone because the traffic on that website has risen and more orders are coming in. So if you haven't already, and you want to do your boy a little favor, go and click on that website. And here's what you do. Don't click on it and click off. Don't do that. Don't, that's, don't do that. Just click on it. If you haven't got time to read, just leave it there. Let it live. Leave the page wide open. Let it breathe. If you come back in an hour or two, just click on another page and then let that page live because the first page will get jealous. Do you understand? A little bit more traffic. Every little helps. And I want to thank the faithful Asheville following. And that's it for Asheville Weekly. And that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 71. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here for an Asheville video that you may not have seen before. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 70. And straight away after that, go on aggregatesupplier.com. And be careful with the two S's, yeah? Because it's aggregatesupplier.com. It's not aggregatesupplier. The two S's there, that, that, that people can get a bit... <laughs>